Welcome to another episode of your personal finance clinic. Uh, I generally will call it the PPE clinic. PPE clinic means personal finance, personal development and entrepreneurship clinic. And I'm your doctor, the doctor in charge of the PPE clinic. My name is Olufemi Shui. I jab you on the butt, I get you on the way to recovery of your personal potential, your finance and yourself. Sometimes we talk about entrepreneurship, sometimes we talk about personal development and most times we talk about personal finance and what you can do to improve your circumstances at any moment in time. Today we're going to be debating a little bit from personal finance. We're going to be talking about 10 tips on managing past mistakes. I'm just going to be listing 10 tips and I added a bonus point to it. And this particular point is very important because a lot of people have been defined by the mistakes they made in the past. And the society actually is guilty of that. For example, there's somebody who says, you know, somebody made a mistake in the choice of marriage or it might not even be the choice of partner. Maybe this guy was married before and he, he, he made some mistake and then he had to, the spouse left him. And then going forward from that moment in mind, they call him a divorcee. And then there's this young, beautiful, intelligent, hardworking lady who fell into hard times. It might not even be her fault. Let's even assume that she wasn't very cautious in terms of the choices she made. And then she got pregnant and then she had a baby. Then the society labels are a single mom, you know, and so on and so forth. Those are the labels we give to people. Those are the labels we accept as individuals for the mistakes that people have made and then from that point onward of calling her a single mom what happens is she's not able to break loose from that somebody wants to marry her and then the relationship is like you want to marry a single mom you want to marry a single mom as if those relatives that actually are calling her harassing her and vilifying her for having a child out of wedlock as if they are not having sex without protection so why do we label people like that and then we, we, we keep restricting their opportunities we keep restricting their chances of doing pretty well so this this particular session is talking to you if you think you've made mistakes in the past and that mistake is holding you back maybe you were supposed to go to school you didn't go to school uh or you couldn't go to school because of the mistakes of your past maybe you were expelled because of cult activity because of um some other issues and then because of that you think oh i've made a mistake in my life and then you carry it like it but if you continue to carry those mistakes they're like bricks and life is like water with very strong tide you will not be able to swim well unless you drop it so how do you drop it is the crux of today's discussion number one you need to accept that mistakes is part of life no matter how careful you are you will make mistakes no matter how cautious you are you will make mistakes in fact sometimes when you are overly cautious you make more mistakes than what you and then you cannot walk through life uh, tiptoeing because if you do you won't be fast you won't move you won't move ahead very quickly and very strongly so you need to accept that you will make mistakes while i'm not advocating that you continue to to make those mistakes i'm just saying that when you learn to accept that you will make mistakes you have the humility when you make those mistakes to quickly identify them to apologize or to remediate which is what the issue is a lot of time when we tiptoe we don't move ahead and we still fall whether we like it or not so you need to accept that fact you need to accept that you make mistakes in terms of sometimes it might be the partner you choose it might be the business you decide to go into it might even be the, the choices of who to love it might be the choices of who to eat it might be the choices of the faith you should do it might be the choices of who to associate with i have made several mistakes one of the mistakes i made in my life is to actually uh, you know start identifying with a group of guys when i was in uh, secondary school who nearly ruined my life but i was lucky though if i wasn't lucky i would not be in this clinic i most likely would be in prison because where we were headed <laughs> baby we we're headed for doom and that is the point so you need to accept that mistake is part of your life point number two is to talk about your mistake this is what it does for you because a lot of time when you make mistake you are ashamed of that mistake you keep it and you because of that you often do not receive help that is number one number two is when people label you when people hold you to ransom because of those mistakes you've made you are enslaving yourself to them the first step in liberating yourself from those 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 jailers those idiots who, who want to knock you on the head because you had a baby out of wedlock who want to knock you on the head because you were not so focused on your studies in university and you came out with a third class those who want to make mistakes you knock you on the head because you failed in that business those who want to knock you in the head because you separated 
from that partner, the thing is, start talking about it because that is the first step of freedom. If you hide it, if you are ashamed of your past, you will never get free of it. And that's the challenge. Anything you are so ashamed that you cannot step out and say, look, I did this. You cannot own. You cannot step out and say, look, this was my error. I have corrected it. Either means you've not corrected it and you don't want to correct it or you're not strong in character enough. So the first, you should learn to talk about it. You should learn to relate it. Now, when you are relating it, I'm not saying you should relate it like a soft story, like want people to feel sorry for you. We won't feel sorry for you. In fact, we feel very bad that you know you fall into that and that we will not respect. But when you talk about it with, with, with a viewpoint that you want to learn from it, what you've learned from it, what you're going to do better next time, that is the beginning of freedom for you. And number three is you must learn to forgive yourself and forgive others. I'm going to talk, there are two sides to forgiveness. And this is the one that is popular that people talk about. You know, this uh, this lady, for example, offends me, like she's done several times. And then I look at her and like, ah, I forgive you. But the second part of it, which is more delicate, is you need to forgive yourself. A lot of people never forgive themselves. They still feel, they carry the guilt all their life, they carry the pain all their life, and they carry the, 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 the burden all their life. You need to let go of whatever it is. The mistake is caused by somebody, maybe it's an influence that you feel this person, maybe because my father was not around, that is why I made this mistake, maybe because my mother was not around, that's why I made this mistake. Maybe one teacher pushed me out of it. You know, and then you keep carrying the, the, the hurt in your heart. Now, this is what happened to most people. If you know is that a lot of people whose parents, you know, I have friends whose father were not on ground, whose mother was, was on ground at that time, and then they hated their parents so much that they're like, I will never allow this to happen to my kids. And you know what happens most times? They end up repeating the same mistakes their parents are. And this is why. Now, anybody you do not forgive, you hold them in your heart. And this is it. The reality, your, your externalities, your, the external things in your life is dependent, is, is birthed by the realities in your heart. So when you carry the art of that person, the unforgiveness, when you hold the person strongly in your heart, you are going to express that person's attribute outside. So you need to let them go. Whatever you do not release becomes your reality. It works through in every facet of life. Anybody you hold, any hurt you hold, you end up expressing it. Why do you think that most of you who have broken relationships or broken man marriages are those who have hurt, who have not let go? Because what they do, every time something comes up, they, they look at it up. Maybe it's like the same thing that that person did to me and then they are not able to let go and then they keep re, re, reacting, they keep acting out that guy or that lady or that thing that they've not been able to let go. So you need to forgive yourself and you need to learn to forgive others and then you need to learn to analyze your mistake. That's number four point, analyzing the mistake. A lot of people, because they make mistakes, they, they, when, when you're talking about the mistake, they close their eyes and like, I don't want to remember that mistake. I don't remember it. You know, when somebody's talking about the mistake, no, that's a very wrong approach to it. You need to learn to say, look, I made this particular mistake. What exactly was the mistake I made? What led to this mistake? And then what are the lessons I need to learn from it? That is very important. You need to be able to sit down and take a look at the mistakes you've made. It doesn't, it's not going to help you if you decide, I don't want to remember that. I've seen people that when I'm talking to them about the mistake, they may say, look, I don't want to talk about it. And then, do you think about it often? No, 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 I don't think about it. I just blank my mind. Your mind hand blank. Na, 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 na. Your mind is working. It's only you have refused to acknowledge it. That is why sometimes you see I have nightmares. That's why sometimes you still remember those mistakes. That's why at moments of your weakness, at high points of your emotion, you, re you react based on the previous errors of your life. That's the point. So you need to be able to analyze the mistake and say, look, this mistake that I made, why did I make the mistake? What led me to the mistake? What can I do to be better? That is how you, what it takes to work. Number five, you need to learn never to judge people. And this is why, because once you learn, to, once you build, you see, your mind is like the muscle. When you exercise, your muscle gets stronger, you get bigger, you know, just like, uh, this is, this is not shit, this is my muscle. <laughs> Somebody's thinking I'm not, <laughs> you know, you can feel it, right? <laughs> your mind is like that. When you learn to judge, when you start judge, being judgmental, what you're doing is strengthening the, this muscle of your mind. And this is what is going to happen. You will judge yourself also very harshly. We need to learn to be open-hearted about people. We need to learn to look at acceptance as the key ingredient 
to, to grow. You need to understand that people will make mistakes. You need to understand that you cannot judge people from the paradigm of the error they've committed. You need to understand that you need to give people the benefit of the doubt. You need to look at them and say, look, it didn't work between you and I, but it does not mean you're a bad person, it does not mean you're a terrible person. But maybe this environment was not, we need to give excuse for people. Now, not because, not that you want to condone mediocrity, no, but because for your own peace of mind and to understand, to, to keep understanding, so that when you build this benevolent mindset, when it comes to your situation, it will apply. Number six, you need to take conscious effort to remediate. This is a very controversial issue. Sometimes when you make mistakes and then you truly you've hurt people, you truly have made errors that have destroyed, have affected people. If at any point in time you analyze your mistake like we've said earlier and you realize that this you did was wrong, this you did was an error, you need to learn to remediate. Yes, that is a very difficult part. That is sometimes very humbling. But the beginning of recovery, of of, of getting over that is when you can reach out to the people you want and say, look, I did this, I'm sorry, I take responsibility for it. Sometimes it's going to require few material resources from you to say, you know what, I did this to you, I'm going to refund you this particular amount, I did this to you, I'm going to, I'm going to do this, I'm going to return this, I did it to you, I'm sorry. Those are ways to rem remediate. When you do that, it frees you further. You know, I said, first of all, learn to analyze it, learn to talk about it, learn to never to be judgmental. And then when you get to that point where you can take conscious of and say, look, I want to remediate. I want to make amends for it. It's going to help you to do that. You need to be able to make amends for that. Number seven is you need to empathize with those that cannot forgive you. No matter what you do, so, no matter how much you try to remediate, some people will not forgive you. Some people will hold it against you till the day they die. Some people will be bitter forever. I know people that, you see, this issue is, is, is a story I can, I can feel very well. Some people will not forgive me. There, there, there was this guy I never forgave for like the first 20, 25 years of my life. Because, and let, let, let me explain what happened. I remember when I was in, um, I think I was in primary one, two, the dream of every boy that was living in my village, that we wanted to join the boys be great. And for the first time in a long time, my parents said, go join the brigade, we're going to support you. And then I, I, I dressed up that day and then, you know, you go march, when you march, uh, once you come back from the match, they talk to you, they, they tell you what kind of instruments you want to play, and then you go play it, and then after all this one, they evaluate you and say, okay, come and join the brigade. So I remember that when we went to play the instrument, somebody uh, tore the drum, and there was, I still remember their name. They said they conspired, they were the two guys that did it, and they told me that, they, they lied and said I was the one that tore the drum. And because of that, I could not join the brigade. The boys brigade, I never forgave them until university it sounded like something very funny but every time i saw those guys were like these two guys when you when people when you make mistakes and people feel up some people will never forgive you first of all you need to empathize with them you need to realize that they have the right not to forgive you and this is why this is important you need a lot of time when you go to ask for forgiveness when you go to remediate and and the person says i would never forgive you and then you come back and have this old young guy how come I have apologized to you if you cannot forgive me? You do not have the right to be angry that they did not forgive you. You just need to empathize because they have the right and they have reserved the right to not forgive you. You cannot hold it against them because if you hold it against them, you will never get over your own mistake and that is the way it works. So you need to learn to empathize with those that cannot forgive you. Number eight, you need to stop making decisions from the paradigm of mistake. You need to stop making decisions from the paradigm of music. A lot of time, let's use a very common example. There's this very beautiful lady, very intelligent, not in solid aptitude for craft and all those stuff. And then she got pregnant out of wedlock, maybe when she was in school, because of poor choices as it were. And then um, she got a baby and then she, she's now out of university. Maybe she went back to school and she wants to marry. And then the first thing she's saying to herself is, who would want to marry a single mother? And then she, the, the choice of the man she wants for her life is reduced because she feels, oh, I'm a single mom, so who is exactly? That is wrong. That is very, very wrong. Somebody who's committed a crime before, maybe was convicted felon and felon, and then he wants to get a job and he's looking at, oh, I cannot apply to this, 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 this because I'm a previous uh, ex-convict. <laughs> that is making you the decisions of your life from the paradigm of mistake. If you do that, you are going to shortchange yourself. That is one way to manage, you know, not to manage past mistakes, not to get over it. 
you need to make your choice on the basis of your dreams, not on the basis of past mistakes. And that is the challenge with most people. A lot of people make the, cho the choices of today based on the mistakes of the past. No, because at the end of the day, your life at the moment is a combination of the choices you make. You have the right, you have the God-given right to start making the choices that will take you to your dreamland. So why would you want to make mistakes using the burden of the past to determine the outcome of your future? Even if you're a single man with 15 kids, you still have the right to dream. Do not make your choices based on what the society thinks you are. Somebody who's dropped out of school makes the choices of who to marry, what to go, what to have the business to do because they say they drop out. They call you a failure because of mistakes of your past and then you make your choices from the viewpoint of I am a failure. That is a wrong way to make your decision because if you continue to do that, you are perpetuating the mistake of the past and you will continue to make that mistake. So, your choices today should not be made from the paradigm of the mistakes of yesterday, but rather from the dream of tomorrow. What is your dream of tomorrow? That should determine the choices you are going to make today. Number nine, you need to reevaluate your personal value and decide to stick by them. Some mistakes are genuine, some are not genuine, some are horrible, some are intense. Some, some you are just being stupid, some you are just foolish enough to, you know, to make those kind of mistakes. But once you realize that these are mistakes you've made, you need to ask yourself, what exactly are the values I want to live? What are your values in the first place? Values are, de are, are defined are those things that you also dear, how you want your life, to, how you want your life to be, how you want to live your life, how you want to enter, how you want to engage, that these things are so dear to you that no matter what they pay you, you will never compromise on those specifics. Those are what you call value. So you need to ask yourself, I have made this mistake. Maybe I was, I'm a convict, I was, I was in jail for a period of time. I made that mistake. What are the values I want to live with? I will never steal, I will never destroy, I will never lie, I will never cheat, I will never dis you know, that kind of, and then you stick to those uh, items and decide because, yes, I made those mistakes, but these are the new sets of values I want to hold so dear that I will not compromise for any reason. And then you continue to stick by them and every day you evaluate yourself based on that. Not Number 10, you know, always remember that your future is determined by the choices of today, not the mistakes of yesterday. Always remember that. That's number 10. The tips on dealing with mistakes. Always remember that your future is determined by the choices of today, not the mistakes of yesterday. So you do have a choice. You can decide to use the mistake of yesterday to destroy the future that you have tomorrow. Or you can decide that you want to make choices, new choices, fresh choices. Because we have new opportunities today to make those choices. And say, look, the choice I will make today will be the determination of my future tomorrow. Always remember that your destiny, your future, is determined by the choice you make today, not the mistakes of yesterday. So no matter what mistake you made, you can recreate, you can create a new life for yourself tomorrow. That is one thing you should never, ever forget. If you remember that, you will be cautious and conscious of the choices you are making today. Because tomorrow is a fresh page for you, it's a blank check. You can write it by your mind, by your choice. If you learn those 10 things, you will, it will help you endure, it will take you far in dealing with the mistakes that you've made in the past. But let me quickly have this, because I listed it as a bonus point. And I said, remember that God forgives and man bears grudge all the time you always remember that so when you make mistakes and you need to talk to somebody you can't talk to god you can't talk to god he will forgive you people are going to bear grudges but you can have the peace that you've been forgiven and that is very important because it is the inner peace that will drive you as you make your choices as you create new values and stick to them as you live your daily life no matter what people think so thank you for being part of my clinic today today is a very somber one you know i'm not i'm not so opti not because i'm not opti like ooh, ooh, that kind of but I, I feel this is a very witchy thing because a lot of people are suffering from the errors that they've done in their past you do not deserve to suffer from the errors you yes sometimes you have to pay it you know you have to pay for some of your mistakes and pay is not necessarily in cash but at the end of the day you deserve to live to the fullest of your potential you deserve to live to the fullest to the peak of your dream and i hope you do and i hope that you don't carry the music in a knapsack and then let it weigh you down as you swim against the tide of life because that is the great journey of life i hope that by the reason of this session you will look back and say you know what i'm free to live the life I chose to live, to live my dream. Until I see you next time in my clinic, I'm going to talk to you about this. Now I'm going to talk to you. My name is Zoe Fenish. I'm your PT, Doc.